My name is Meredith Wasik, and I get to serve the district as the Director of Career and Technical Education. I am a product of Fort Bend ISD. I'm a Dulles High School graduate long before there were many of these high schools here. Um, both my husband and I graduated in Fort Bend, and we raise our children here in the, in the school district as well. So I'm excited to be able to visit with you all tonight. This is a very um, interesting mix in that it's really open to everyone. So we have all age ranges that are here this evening. Um, I do believe that you'll walk away. Some of you will have many more questions than you came with, and that's okay. Um, that's what we want to really kind of invoke in our middle school and high school students of, um, hey, we want to dig deeper and understand. We want to have some critical conversations and critical thinking about what you want your next to be. And for my elementary and young um, junior high students, we hope that this is the start of a long road of a long relationship um, in career and technical education. So really the focus tonight is to give you a lot of broad information. Um, at the end of our presentation, I will share information about how you get those more in-depth questions answered over the course of the next couple of weeks. So to kick off this evening, we're gonna play a short video, which is one of our alumni um, speaking about what her experience was like in our program and how that's helped her. Hello, my name is Emma Zernich and I'm a CTE alumni. I graduated from William P. Chavez High School this past year and was in the business slash industry CTE program. I will always remember the time that I made it to the International Career Development Conference my first year being at DECA. With the sponsorship of the CTE program in FBISD, I got to attend DECA competition in Atlanta just my freshman year and create lifelong friendships with people that I still talk to today. I definitely would say that I have benefited most from being a part of DECA, a career technical student organization during high school. I got to apply what I learned from my in-school CTE classes into real-world problems and projects throughout DECA. I also learned leadership skills and how to work with others, essential skills you need going into college, which I definitely learned and used in my first semester. I'm now studying marketing at the University of Texas at Austin, and I've joined various organizations like the American Marketing Association. to pursue a career in marketing management after graduation. If I were to give advice to a prospective 60s student, I would say try everything. Apply, apply, apply. Even if you don't think you're qualified or good enough, just finish the application or attend the intro meetings. Just text someone that you know inside the organization or program. There is no harm in trying. We will never regret just putting in a little more effort. Thank you so much. All right, so Emma is just one example of our students that come into class. And if you hear her whole story, Emma would tell you that she had no idea what she wanted to do when she started high school at William B. Travis. Um, and she found a calling and she found a passion in marketing. So I, I will say that just as a former teacher in one of our classrooms teaching marketing, it's super exciting that I get to hire back my former students who also went on to study marketing and they come back to work in our district and serve in those same capacities. So it really is about what we can do um, to help all of you find your passion and find what your next is. So what will tonight look like? I'm going to go through about a 20, 25 minute presentation where I will define for you what is CTE. Um, we'll talk about why it is so important and how it will impact um, really the world that we live in um, from the perspective of how we are going to be successful in keeping America I'm kind of on the right track of being able to produce the things that we need. I think everybody in this room is feeling the effects of um, distribution and logistics problems right now. So we'll talk to that. 
Um, we'll talk about how you as students access CTE programs. And so that looks different depending on what program you have an interest in and really what stage you're in, whether you're in elementary all the way up to my eighth graders, ninth and 10th graders. And then finally, we're gonna hear from a number of professionals that will talk to us about really how CTE plays a part in what your next is, what their journeys looked like, um, and their journeys were all, were all very different um, to get to the positions that they're in. And they will speak um, really from a parental standpoint for us about why it's so important for all of you to engage now and know what um, the things are that they're going to be looking for long term. So career and technical education in 2000, and this is really a long time ago for me to say this, but in 2014, we developed a mission statement with um, the help of parents, students, teachers, and business and industry partners. And every year we really sit and evaluate this mission statement and think, does it hold true and do we still believe that that is what we do? So as you can see from the screen, um, the CTE programs here at Fort Bend ISD we provide challenging career pathways for every student utilizing real world practices and evolving skill sets, attitudes, and behaviors. And that's important because you'll notice that there's nothing in that that is stagnant. So everything is constantly changing and that is because we find it important to stay current with what is happening in industry. I will tell you that sometimes that gets really frustrating because we're changing and evolving so quickly as times require us to. So it, we would not be doing the students um, justice if we were stuck in the past. And I'll give you kind of a technology um, experience. We all know that two years ago, we had no idea what education online looked like. We were all coming to classrooms and sitting in our desks and facing front. And at that point in time, there are many of us that were saying, man, education should look different. This is the same way that education has looked since 1950. And then all of a sudden we are given this great gift called COVID that says we're going to change education. And we had to respond. So as a program that teaches education and training and information technology and as a school district that is a business that operates, we very quickly had to pivot. That means that we had to pivot what it meant in our education and training program. We're no longer teaching students or teaching students to become teachers that stand in a classroom all day long. It looks different and we can't imagine what it's going to look like 10 years from now when they are in the classroom. So we are ever changing and ever evolving. So what is career and technical education? How many of you think of CTE as wood shop and home economics? So nobody's gonna raise their hand, and I know there are adults sitting in this room. One person, two people, thank you. We all know that if you are somewhere around my generation, then home economics and wood shop is what we think of as CTE. We used to say all the time, this is not your father's wood shop anymore. They don't even have classes called home economics and wood shop anymore. We have much more sophisticated names like principles of construction, architectural design, and human services. So it looks different than those of us that were sitting in classrooms in the 80s, maybe early 90s, late 70s from that perspective. Career and technical education are a group of coherent courses that lead to a pathway inside of a specific program area. What that means is students take courses that have kind of a gradual learning experience. So I start at an entry level. We'll use the term principles of arts and audio video, since we have our arts and audio video students here today, kind of showing you and modeling you what that looks like. They then go on to take more rigorous coursework as they move through the program. Audio video production one, audio video production two. So they increase in knowledge over time. That is a coherent sequence of courses that lead to a pathway. Our arts and audio video students are in a production communications pathway inside of arts and audio video. In some situations, we have multiple pathways in program areas. So as you can see on the screen, and I'm not gonna read all of them to you, 
we have a broad array of what those program areas are. Fort Bend ISD does not make this up. This is not our choice on what the program areas are called. It actually comes from the federal government to the state level and then to the local level. And the reason being is because the federal government believes so strongly in career and technical education that they put grant funds into CTE on an annual basis. If you're into any type of politics, you might know that in 2018, the federal government reauthorized the Perkins Grant, which basically said, yes, we're gonna continue to spend money on career and technical education. It's only the fifth time that they've reauthorized the Perkins Grant since it started in the 50s, which means all the years prior to that, they just let it roll and they just assume we're going to do things. What was different this time when they reauthorized it was that they said to states, you must do right by students. You must put them in pathways and programs that make sense. So that has resulted in some change for us. So what do we teach here at Fort Bend? When you move or look at other districts, you will find that each school district chooses pathways that are appropriate for their location. <clears throat> the state of Texas no longer says that pathways that are appropriate in Houston are necessarily appropriate in El Paso and Odessa or in East Texas or South Texas or the Panhandle. The reason is, is because the workforce is different and what the needs are in those locations change. Here in Fort Bend ISD, we're a rather large school district, so we do have quite a bit of opportunity for students. So I'm not going to tell you every class tonight. I want you to know that if you're sitting here as a high schooler. I'm going to talk to you about the program pathways, and then if you have interest in something specific, at the end I'll tell you how to learn more about that. We offer agriculture, food, and natural resources, and we specifically focus on an animal science pathway. There are many pathways, agribusiness, animal science, plant science, but in this district, we focus on animal science. We do also offer a floral design course, so that would normally be in a plant pathway, um, but it sits outside of what we do here because it allows students to have a fine art credit. So that is important for you to understand because there are CTE classes that count for your graduation credits. Floral design counts as fine arts, so you can double dip. We have a lot of science classes that allow you to double dip in both CTE and in science. We have an architecture and construction program area and you will see that we have three pathways that we offer. We offer architectural design, which is taught primarily at all 11 comprehensive high schools. Then we have electrical and HVAC, which is taught here at James Reese. Sometimes we have programs that A, are either starting out, B, require a significant amount of space, or C, require such a specific learning experience and teacher that we have to locate it at a special site. So you're sitting inside of that special site where some of our programs are offered. Every student has the opportunity to engage in career and technical education in middle school and high school. We offer arts and audio video. Our, our friends that are in the purple shirts today that are representing that program. Um, they are in the digital communications pathway. We have business marketing and finance, and you heard from Miss Emma, um, who spoke a little bit about her experience in business marketing and finance. We have two options here. You can look at business management, or you can look at marketing and sales. Um, Trey, I think, snuck out a minute ago, but she's a former student, um, marketing student turned employee. Um, Emma is studying marketing but we have business management that focuses on the holistic of business approach. Education and training, funny that we're in the education business, and this is one of our new programs. It is not a program that we have had in about the past 20 years. Ironically, in the 90s, 
Fort Bend ISD had the largest education and training program in the state of Texas. Crazy, huh? <laughs> we hire many, many Fort Bend grads. So about 35 to 40 percent of the teachers and staff that we hire annually actually graduated from Fort Bend ISD. So it only makes sense that we would bring back an education and training program so we can raise up our own. This is a unique um, opportunity for students that we are test piloting. Mm -hmm. Students who go through the education and training program pathway in Fort Bend, upon graduation, will receive a letter of intent. For all the kiddos that are sitting in here, that means that Fort Bend's telling you, if you graduate from college with a teaching certification, we will guarantee you a job. So for all of us that are parents that are paying to put kids through college right now, that's a really great feeling to know that your kid actually has a letter of intent that says, I will hire you back into the school district. So we believe in the program. We believe in what's happening. And so our human resources department has worked very closely with us to design this program over the past two years. Next year will be our first cohort of students that will be eligible to move through that entire pathway to receive letters of intent when they graduate. Health science, we are here in the, in the Texas Medical Center, which is the medical center capital of the US for sure, if not the world. Um, our health science program has over 4,000 students enrolled in it. You can take health science classes at all of our high schools and you can come here to take specialized courses. We also have academies and PTEC, which is a dual program where students earn their associate's degree in college at the same time that they earn their high school degree in health science. We have culinary arts. If you have not ever been here for a tour, we won't give an official tour tonight, but in February we will start the, um, having public tours and you can see our magnificent um, culinary kitchen on the other side of this wall if you choose to come back. Programs like our education and training in culinary arts are unique in how we implement student experience. We believe that students need hands-on real-world opportunities. So just like you see our arts and audio video students filming tonight, a number of our programs have extended learning opportunities through labs. For example, if you drove up and you noticed the sign on the outside of the door that said the grill with a pepperonis um, picture, that is a restaurant that our culinary students operate. You can order your meals to pick up Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and, and drive up and get it on the way home or you can come into the restaurant and eat. So it's open three days a week. Currently, we have our cosmetology students in the cosmetology salon. They're open four nights a week. You can bring your vehicle here um, to have it worked on. You can have your inspection done, your oil changed from our students that are in that program. And our education and training, anybody have any little four-year-olds at home? A couple? We have our early education program. Um, this piece of our early education program is a paid um, program that sits at the other end of the building. So if you drive around and you see a playground and you think, I'm at a high school, why am I seeing an elementary playground? It's because we have a four-year-old program. Our education and training students get to go in and experience what that is really like in a hands-on um, opportunity. We offer human services and we have two pathways. Cosmetology, and what's interesting about cosmetology is this pathway is not approved across the entire state. The reason that it is not approved across the entire state is because there is no workforce need in certain areas across the state. So what the state does is looks at what is workforce telling us and they update this about every four to six years. And at that point, the state comes in and says, in Houston, you do or do not need XYZ. 
That is how the state holds us accountable for being current. At the home campuses, you can take family and community services. This program is one that we are seeing a huge increase, and it is because there are classes in counseling and mental health that the students take in high school. And as many of us know, our students have gone through a life-changing experience over the past two years. We are in a very different place as a society, and we are starting to see a major increase in social and emotional well-being, and those classes are starting to get a lot of interest from high school students. We offer information technology networking systems. Students can take computer maintenance and computer networking. That is offered here. And so students will come over here in their sophomore, junior, and senior year. The reason being is they get to simulate their own complete network. So we can't really open that up at every high school campus. We have to have it controlled. So in our upstairs computer lab, they build their own network. They run their cables. They see what it looks like, and they get to um, tap into really what cybersecurity um, looks like. <clears throat> Oftentimes, people don't know that we have a JROTC program. We offer JROTC at every high school, and in Fort Bend, it falls in the career and technical education area because the state places college, career, and military readiness all in one department. Um, important for you to know that if you decide you want to try JROTC, there is no required commitment to enlist. That is the biggest misconception that I find from our constituents in the, in the area. So students, if that's something you want to try, you're not committing the rest of your life to four years, five years, ten years. However, if you do stay in that program for four years, and you decide to enlist, you go in to the services as an officer because you are given credit for being in that program for four years. Impressive. <clears throat> we have law and public services. Um, we have law enforcement. And we are starting an emergency response or emergency services program. Next year will be the first year that we offer disaster response. The following year, we will start our EMT basic and then our EMT advanced and 911 operator training. So that is um, a, an example of how we are forward planning. We cannot offer everything all at one time and start every program every year, um, but we implement things as we have the right time and the right space to do that so that we can build capacity. In this building, we offer manufacturing and welding very specifically, and a little information about how we engage with our business partners. So all of these people up here in the reserved are business partner friends of ours. When we built this building, we had a number of business partners at the table that helped think through design. So not that you can see it out the glass window, but there's a beautiful bridge outside. That bridge actually does not serve as an exit for upstairs. That bridge was added to this building because our business partners told us, we don't weld standing up in boots, but that's how you teach in high school. We require students to hang off of bridges and hold heavy equipment upside down. So that bridge was built so that students can harness and hang from it and decide do you really want to go into welding and hang from a building up in the air? Um, Bridget Morrison, who's our, our risk manager, had, <laughs> had a lot of fun sitting in on those meetings when we were talking about, yeah, we're going to put this bridge in and we're going to let kids harness from it. So this year's Welding 2 students will be the first group that actually get to harness off of that bridge. We've had COVID the past two years, so we've had to do things a little bit differently, but um, they'll get to harness off of that bridge. Um, it was also reinforced so that if we ever bring a fire truck in onto the property, we can have students climb onto the second floor. So the way that we built the pathway and the um, access point allows us to expand programming very specifically to use those spaces. 
We have STEM, and this word gets thrown out, this acronym gets thrown around a lot. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. In the CTE world, um, we focus very heavily on technology engineering pieces of it, and not so much the science and math, because those two programs fall in another department. Um, but we have both an engineering pathway and a computer programming and software development pathway. Those are offered at every high school, so students can stay at their home campuses. And then our final program is transportation, distribution, and logistics. We have both automotive and diesel mechanics. We are the only school district in this side of Houston that has a diesel mechanics bus lift. Our bus barn doesn't even have a bus lift. So they bring the buses over here and put them up on the lift so our students can, can learn from that and see what that looks like. The reason we did that is because all of our neighbors, Katie, Aleaf, Lamar, and Alvin, all have paint and body. We all serve the same business partners. And so it was not in our best interest as a district to start paint and body because guess what nobody else is producing? Diesel mechanics. So we decided to differentiate. That does mean that we don't have a paint and body program here. And if you were in Katy, you would have that opportunity or a leave. But they don't have diesel mechanics. So we try very hard to work together as school districts to ensure that we are serving our business community. So why is CTE so important? Don't worry, I'm not gonna read that to you, but when they put this video up, you can, you can see all of that. At the end of the day, our workforce in America is aging out in all kinds of industries, number one. And number two, something that we could not have predicted three years ago, we are having the great resignation right now. Many, many, many people, whether they're aging out or not, are deciding that they want to move into a different lifestyle. And we are not equipped to serve all of our business needs um, from the, the perspective of who we have coming into the industry. So CTE really does give the opportunity for students to explore what that looks like and for us to build up um, kind of the next generation. So what does this do for you all, students, as you go through the programs? One of the biggest things that I tell students all the time is when you go through a CTE program, you are gaining a competitive advantage. I do not have discussions about is CTE for a student who is going to college or who is not because I do not believe in that conversation. I believe in the conversation that all students have all types of post-secondary aspirations. And what mine looks like may not be what yours looks like. And so from a CTE perspective, we are preparing students for whichever direction they choose to go. The majority of children these days will go into college and have to work their way through college. Very, very few people will go through college without ever having a job anymore. So we are creating a competitive advantage where you can apply for scholarships and create a resume that says, I have had real world workforce industry opportunity. We are very, very proud of the fact that last year we placed nearly 70 students into internships both inside of Fort Bend ISD as a business and externally. We send our teachers out to externships so they can stay current. Through all of that, we are working to change the culture and the mindset of the people that we are around. We want everybody to understand that every path is valuable. Regardless of what you may have heard, and those of us that are my age and my generation know that everybody told us you had to do four by four. That meant you went to four years of math, science, English, social studies, and you were all going to go to college. And that's okay if that's your path. But it's also okay if it's not your direct path and you may want to do something different. Um, we are very big on ensuring that all of our students are gaining real-world relevant skills for today. That is why we update and change technology and have increased demands on our teachers to stay relevant. 
And we as a school district give our students the opportunity to earn industry certifications. That means that we in Fort Bend feel so strongly that we pay for that. So we spend roughly $400,000 a year investing in our CTE students on their industry certifications. So if you happen to be the person sitting in the audience that decides you want to go through health science and you want to get your certified medical assistant um, licensure, we pay for that. If you decide you want to become an ASE automotive technician, we pay for that. If you decide you want to go through cosmetology and you get your thousand clock hours, we pay for you to get your licensure. We are in a unique position in Fort Bend that we can still do that. That does not happen everywhere, but we believe in what we are asking our students to do. So how do you access CTE? CTE courses start as early as seventh grade and probably the biggest thing that you need to know is we currently have universal course selection in high school. That means if you have seen something tonight that you have an interest in, you should be able to request it for next school year. That does not mean that we can guarantee that we can offer every class in face-to-face -face instruction. Sometimes we have to do things uniquely. We currently have 29 courses being taught remotely because I don't have enough students to make a full class at Kempner. So we have figured out how to become really creative. Ms. Lang has to teach a number of online courses just to ensure students have those opportunities. But that is how we develop and build our programs. Students can attend um, specialized campuses. James Reese is a specialized campus. We have P-TECH programs and we have academies. So there are a plethora of opportunities for you. From the perspective of what next, number one, make a plan. If you have something of interest, start looking at how many credits am I going to need? So I'm looking over here, I have elementary, elementary friend. So in her mind, she's probably going, I don't know if I'm really gonna be taking any of these classes yet. But I guarantee you if something sparks an interest, then she would wanna start taking high school credits in seventh and eighth grade so that you have enough space to take all of these opportunities. We have lots of options for you, and we want you to engage in all of those options. My, my closing little story for you is about my own son. So I've graduated one out of Austin High School who is at U of H now and did Wharton County Junior College for two years and works at FedEx in the middle of the night um, and has found a love. He never in a million years would have told me he was gonna be in distribution and logistics, but he's been working at FedEx since COVID started and he absolutely loves it. And so he has declared a major is distribution and logistics. My senior that sits at Austin High School right now swore he was gonna be an engineer and he was gonna to go to Rice. I am not an engineer. My husband's in finance and accounting. He's not an engineer. But by the time he finished his engineering program as a junior in high school, because he started in eighth grade with high school credits, he said, this is not for me. Thank you. I did not pay for a degree that he is not using. He is currently in our automotive program here at Reese and absolutely loves it. So he's trying to figure out how I become an automotive engineer, right, and combine the best of both worlds. He's also an athlete and has played vars varsity sports um, the whole time he's been in high school. So CTE doesn't mean that you have to make a choice. Now, my children are not fine arts kiddos. However, I was. And so you can do fine arts and CTE. You can do athletics and CTE. You can engage in many other opportunities. So as I turn over, um, I will tell you there's some QR codes around the room. If you have specific questions about programs, you can certainly submit those and then we will be creating FAQs for you afterwards. We're gonna move over to our professionals and I'm gonna go to my script because I have to read about everybody um, and kind of what they're bringing to the table and we have some questions that they will engage in. So Allie Heiderduka, you wanna come up here but don't trip on the boards, um, was born and raised here in Sugarland and is a Clements High School graduate 
who was in our marketing program as well. Um, he went to the University of Houston where he got a bachelor's degree in hotel and restaurant management. And he worked his way up through Jersey Mites from the time that um, he started on a team to now owning five Jersey Mites locations. So please welcome Ali Heiderduka. Next, we have Mackenzie Reisner. Mackenzie is from Meadville, Texas, so still in Fort Bend County. Still in Fort Bend County. Uh, she grew up in the agriculture industry all of her life um, and went to Meadville High School. She graduated with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Animal Science and a business minor from Texas A&M. <laughs> <laughs> She also holds a Master's of Science in Agribusiness. While she was at A&M, she went to work for HEB. So we have some more HEB friends up here. In their meat procurement department. Um, after graduation, she's accepted a full-time position where she works on the OWN brand, so the HEB OWN brand, if you will. Um, and she manages their produce and floral teams on the OWN brand manager. So, Christine Potter. Christine has a whole lot of um, letters that come after her name. Um, so MSN, RN, I won't get all of them right, but she is the director of critical care at Memorial Hermann Sugar Lane Hospital. And afterwards, I'll tell you about my experience last week when I lost a family member and her hospital and how great they did. Um, Christine graduated from Wharton County Junior College. Um, where she had earned an associate's degree in nursing and later pursued a bachelor's of science in nursing from Grand Canyon University, followed by a master's degree in nursing um, in 2020. She has been at a number of different hospitals. Christine enjoys community outreach and developing innovative approaches to improving quality and patient care and mentoring nurses to reach their career aspirations. Christine's goal is to bring the services offered through the Texas um, Medical Center here to Fort Bend County. So, Ms. Christine. <laughs> Assistant Chief Michelle Allen has worked for the Sugarland um, Police Department for 24 years, although she does not look like she's old enough to be at the police department for 24 years. She is currently um, commands the Support Services Bureau which oversees the training unit, records unit, detention facility, court officers, and crime prevention. She began her law enforcement um, career at Houston Baptist um, University Police Department. She's worked for Spring ISD and Fort Bend County Precinct 4 Constable's Office. Um, she graduated from HBU, I found this really interesting, with a double major in computer information systems, so she thought she was going to go into computer science um, and management, and then she later earned a master's degree in criminal justice um, from San Houston State. She has trained at a number of places, including the FBI National Academy. Assistant Chief Michelle Allen. <laughs> and we have Miss Angela Cody. Angela serves as the Vice President of Operations for Bartlett Cock General Contractors and oversees the entire eastern, eastern region of Texas. She has worked on a number of major projects um, and high profile building projects during her 23 years at multiple levels, um, local, national, and international. She graduated from Penn State um, where she was, after graduation from Penn State, she was named one of top 20 under 40. Did I say that right? Um, in 2015, um, and then in 2018, was the STEAM role model for Houston Women's Chamber of Commerce. She has started a local women in construction initiative, and as you can imagine, the majority of the time she's the only female in the room um, in this industry. And she serves as an ACE mentor for Houston's, as Houston's past chairman of the board. Um, she is very big into serving for CTE advisory um, committees uh, across all kinds of school districts. And she is a parent of students here in Fulton ISD. So, Angela Cody. So we have a 
number of questions that we're going to ask, and I'm not going to call on you by name so you can jump in when you're ready. Um, uh, Joey, are the microphones turned on? Yes. Good? Awesome. Sure, I'll be good to go. So your microphone should be good to go. Our first question for not tonight is, what personal characteristic has been the most valuable for you in your career? Okay, Allie's the only male, so I'll call on him to start. How's that? <laughs> Yeah, I think um, resilience is huge. You know, I think that's a hot word right now in education. Um, you got to be resilient. You know, problems will keep coming, and uh, you just got to kind of work through them and, you know, do the best you can. But in the end, you know, just don't give up. Just keep going. So. I can follow up with that. Um, I would say from my standpoint, communication and just being able to speak in front of people or speak your mind or tell, you know, your parents or your students, like you're free to be able to choose your own pathway and whatever you want to do. Um, communicating is a key part of my day to day job, whether it be with suppliers or other partners at HEB or any of our customers, you know. We are always talking, we're always communicating, and that's always going to be a part of your everyday life, no matter what career path you choose. I'll just echo some of the things that she um, had said. And, uh, so in the healthcare industry, we encourage you to just to get involved, um, be a part, set goals for yourselves, and make your goals well known. And so if you're able to get out and volunteer, um, get involved in the programs that are offered here, that's where you set a name for yourself. And so I found that very successful in my career is just set goals for yourself. Um, even if you just get started, let them know where you want to be. Um, I love mentoring um, nurses. I've even had uh, nursing assistants who have um, finished programs and I've actually helped mentor them into nursing um, roles. And so make your goals known, don't be shy. Um, it's never too early to let us know what you're interested in. All right. I'll say, I'm sorry. go ahead. I was just going to say, for, for my area, honesty, integrity uh, are some of the big things here because obviously being in law enforcement, when you have to go and testify in court uh, or just any opportunity that you have to interact with folks, they expect that you're telling them the truth. So truthfulness is very important for us. And not only for us to, in our jobs, but also to get our jobs. Because if you're not truthful in the information you're putting on an application, uh, then that can prevent you from even getting into the career in the first place. I think for me, it's been the willingness to ask the question. Um, there's a lot, I mean, you, you pointed out I'm the only girl in the room sometimes, but it's not always like that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, it looks like everybody, right? Uh, but to ask the question and to confidently ask the question and keep asking until I understand what it is. So nobody knows everything about everything. And if my, my job to build a building would be, I, I need to make sure that it's on time, it's on budget, that all the right people are there. But I don't have to know exactly how everything works. But I need to make sure that all the tools are there to do it. So having enough confidence to ask the question, and repeatedly. And even in school, you have to keep asking. I don't understand. Keep digging. All right, thank you. What is the single most important thing that a student can do during high school to get a head start on career choices? I'll get this one off. So for us, any opportunity that the student would have to actually come up and speak to an officer, come and tour the police station, uh, come to a teen uh, police academy that we have in the summertime. Just any opportunity to get to know what law enforcement is all about, how you can interact with it. Is this truly going to be the right career choice for you? Uh, the, the earlier that you get involved, as she kind of pointed out, I for a while thought I was going to be a doctor. I started off OBGYN, was going to be my career. Then I started off as being a computer uh, you know, science major, that was going to be my career, and I ended up in law enforcement. So, so the quicker that you can have your child actually get exposed to what that career choice is all about, it's going to make them a lot, a lot quicker in deciding if that's the right fit for them. I can kind of echo what Michelle just said. Basically, when I was a kid, most of the time I can still consider myself a kid, I feel like, um, <laughs> I definitely wanted to try so many different things. I wanted to talk to so many different people. 
You know, I knew that I loved ag from the get-go. I come from a very rural community. My dad's a farmer and rancher. You know, I, I knew I loved that, but I also knew my mom was an accountant. So I was like, okay, so what's that about? So I would ask her questions. I knew family friends who were nurses, you know, and I wanted to keep exploring to try to figure out, okay, what's my path going to be moving forward? Because it may not look like my dad, it may not look like my mom, it may not look like anyone else in my family, but being able to choose that for myself, I knew is something that I had to live with for the rest of my life um, because I had to love what I did growing up. Um, because if you don't, then you will truly be working every day instead of doing something that you truly love. Yeah, I mean, to second that, you know, uh, in my industry, you know, it's all about passion. It's all about passion. Can you guys hear me? Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, in my industry, you know, it's all about passion. You know, you're working seven days a week. You know, Mother's Day, you're working, you know. So the single thing that a, uh, a student can do is, is try to figure out your passion, ask the questions, you know, try everything. Um, and, you know, you, you'll find what you love, and then you'll, you know, like Kenzie said, you'll never work a day in your life, so. Those are all very good points. Um, as you all know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and still are. And so um, I would say when you're considering a healthcare profession, um, try to get out there. And I mentioned before, volunteer. Speak to those of you that are around um, that have family members or friends that are nurses or in healthcare in general. Um, what I see a lot of times is uh, nursing students, CNA students, they come in and they're looking to, to get out at three o'clock, right? And so you've got to be willing to put in the work. Um, nursing and healthcare is forever changing. I encourage you to take opportunities where you work the odd shifts, right? So you're prepared for what healthcare has to offer. Um, um, some of the other panelists mentioned compassion, and so compassion is huge. And so nursing and healthcare, whether you're a nurse or whether you're a physician, um, a CNA, it all requires compassion in some of the hardest times. And so I would just recommend you get out there as much as you can and speak to the community um, and just get information about um, everything that's out there for healthcare. I'll go last again. Don't um, give up, I think is really, if there's something that you'd like to do and all of your friends are like, well, we're taking this art class, and you really want to take woodshop, take woodshop. It's not everybody else's life. It's yours. And if there's things that you're passionate about, ask. If, I wish someone in high school had told me that, well, Angie, you like doing woodshop. You like accounting, and you like your architecture drafting class. Maybe construction is something you should do. Um, no one said that to me. I found it when I was in college. So put those pieces together. If there's something you like, try it. I guess that's what one of the first things that the, the young woman who said, she said, try everything. Because you never know how all those pieces come together. I mean, somebody who's an audiovisual may say, huh, I kind of like the programming part of this. And you end up doing virtual design for a construction company. You have no idea how all the pieces come together if you don't try. If you follow the pack and you follow everyone else around you, um, you're going to end up short-sighted and, and sad at the end of it. You're just not going to have what you want. So I'm going to throw a question at y'all that we didn't start with and we didn't give you ahead of time. Are y'all good with that? <laughs> I'll let Angie start on that and we'll work our way back down. She's like, oh, where is it? Catch me off guard and make me go. I know. I know. <laughs> So, since our audience is so diverse on student ages, what is one of the biggest things that you see that prevents someone from being hired into a job in your area right now? You can be honest. <laughs> um, unwillingness to learn. Kids or young people that come in and they think they know everything and they don't want to learn, they expect that, um, well, I went to college, or I went to this trade school, or I did this, I need to be the boss. When that's not how it really works, and, and it's frustrating because a lot of people will come in and have unrealistic expectations. So you have to, you have to earn it. 
and it doesn't really matter, any of us up here will probably agree that you can't walk into the room. We want confidence. We want people that are, that are confident and you can communicate, but not people that are going to um, think that, they're, that they don't have to earn it or that they know more. Because every single day I learn something new in my job. Every single day. And everyone that, I, that works for me, I expect that they're going to learn something new every day. That's the only way to get better. So I think that when you have unrealistic expectations that you're going to walk in, you're going to make, you know, $150,000 and leave it free, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so yes. so just, just to add to that, um, what I see oftentimes when we hire um, individuals into healthcare, when I interview candidates, a lot of times they come in and they, they don't want to stay long. Right? They're coming in and they're thinking that we're looking for that next best thing. So I'll interview candidates, for example, and they'll say, well, I'm a, you know, I just got out of nursing school and I want to be a nurse practitioner in two years. So that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for people that truly want to um, pour their energy into becoming a good nurse, becoming a good um, certified nurse's assistant, and learning those skills before you jump into a nurse practitioner type role. So... Think about that when you're interviewing for a position. It's not necessarily we're looking for someone with 20 years of experience or someone who's wanting to go be a doctor or go get a master's degree. It's not about that. It's being um, compassionate towards what you're applying for. Yeah, I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, in the restaurant industry, you know, we have so many people that apply and they're looking for the next best, best thing. And, you know, I just... I sometimes ask them quite, you know, frankly, you know, it's like you're closing the door before you even know what's on the other side of it. And it's, it's, you know, I, I did hotel restaurant management in college and at U of H and I, and any, any uh, restaurant related class, I literally did not pay attention or listen because I was so focused on hotels and, you know, now I'm here running five, five restaurants. So it's like, you never know where you might end up. So don't close the door that you don't know what's on the other side. So. From my point of view, um, echoing what has kind of already been said as well is just being willing to be a hard worker. Um, definitely my time clock does not punch out at five o'clock. It doesn't punch in at eight some days, you know. It's all variable um, and being able to put in that hard work and also being able to work as a team and with a team. Um, you know, most jobs that you're in, in a day-to-day, -day, you're having to communicate with other people. You're having to work with your team, whoever's helping you orchestrate, you know, building a building like this or bringing a new item to shelf in my case. It's always working with a team. And so being able to be a team player and pick up some of the slack when you need to or take the lead when you need to is always really important, um, especially in what I do as well. So surprisingly, a lot of people, I get this question a lot, a lot of people think that it's because you commit crimes, you can't be in the law enforcement. Well, yeah, obviously, if you're a felon, that's not the kind of person we want to attract to the profession, obviously. Uh, but surprisingly, the number one reason why most people are not successful in getting into a law enforcement career is because of dishonesty, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. People will actually put misinformation on their application. And then the other biggest thing is omission. Be dishonest by omission, by not putting, uh, you know, the, uh, the correct place that they worked in the past or um, not putting some other applications that they put at other agencies. So being the detail-oriented, be honest, believe it or not, guys, we're human beings. Even though we're police officers, you can make mistakes and still be a police officer, but you need to be honest about that. All right, thank you. I, I threw one in there for, for fun. I'm gonna adjust to one of the questions, but it's to the same point. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about how everybody's path looks different after high school. Um, so in your profession, is there a singular path to success, or is there room for people to come in who have explored both, I went to school, as a four-year degree, I went to a trade school, I decided not to work, not to go to college, but then I went back or I didn't need it. 
Is there room for flexibility in your profession? And what does that look like? So there definitely is for law enforcement. And surprisingly, we actually have quite a few people that in their 40s have decided, you know what, I'm, I'm getting burned out where I am. I'm going to change careers and come in. So we, we have no age limit. It's, 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 you have to be able to pass our physical agility test, which that keeps some people out. <laughs> but uh, the, there, there's no age limit. Um, we do have some education requirements. And uh, for, for those that don't know, you have to actually be 21 before you can even be granted a peace officer license. So what I tell the young people is that you graduate high school, you know, you're generally about age of 18. You gotta wait till 21 if you really wanna go into law enforcement. So go out there, just go to a community college. You don't have to pay, spend a whole bunch of money. Go to community college, get a little bit of, of that under your belt. To, you know, learn how to write those reports whenever you come in to, to law enforcement. Get some life experience, get some part-time jobs, get some life experience out there, especially anything having to do with customer service because that essentially will relate into what you're doing here. Uh, so yes, there are multiple paths, whether it, it go, you go through the education route or go and find out if you want to be a, a lawyer, if you want to be a doctor, if you think you're going to do all these other kind of great things, go, go try it out and then come back to us. There's plenty of room, we're waiting for you. And we're hiring, by the way. <laughs> so I really do love this question. HEB is so diverse. Whether you're working in stores, whether you're working in warehousing, transportation, we need you. We all the time need you, I promise. Um, or whether you're working in the corporate office like I am. I had bosses and mentors when I was an intern at HEB who they started off when they were 16 years old working in stores bagging groceries. And they basically worked their way up through stores. They you know, were then a department lead or then went into our store management program and ran the store and then found, okay, maybe I could do a corporate thing. And they came into the corporate role, never even having going to college. Um, or you have people like me who went the college route, who you know, I applied for 13 different internships with HEV because I was like, man, if I apply and apply and apply, maybe they'll see the thing. I'm really interested because I was and sure enough one of them finally bit and that was my you know step in the door so it definitely isn't black or white it can be any path that you choose um, you can definitely be you know working in our warehouse one day loading pallets to go to stores and be called hey do you want to come work in QA you've been looking at this stuff every day and does this look right does this look like it needs to go to stores um, so just your path can be anything that you choose it to be whenever you choose to come work at HEB. Yeah, and um, in my industry, you know, whether it be Jersey Mike's or entrepreneurship, you know, I mean, it's, it's for everybody. There's <coughs> a certain path that you, you know, you, you got to take. Um, you know, it's just finding that passion and, and just going after it. But, um, you know, it's all about just getting to know people. You know, we service people. I mean, every business serves people, so... Yeah, there's not a set path, so. Um, I would say the same thing for healthcare. There's no, there's no set way to do it. I've, I've hired um, people um, into clerical positions that get right out of high school. Um, and the joy of that is these people get to come into roles and really see what it's like to deal with patients, deal with families, answer, answer phone calls, answer call lights from patients, and really get a feel for if healthcare is what they want to do. Um, so again, these are, these are people that are right out of high school. Um, then we have people that come in and get um, certifications to be nursing assistants, and they come in and they're you know, at the bedside with our patients, and they're working alongside our nurses, and it really creates a pathway for them on whether or not they wanna pursue that route or not. Um, I recently um, had a, a nursing assistant who went through our new graduate program and pursued the path of a nurse, and she's now um, one of our one of our top night shift nurses in the ICU, um, and so we we definitely have various ways to go in healthcare, and that's the joy and really one of the reasons why I chose healthcare. Because although I'm a nurse, there's so many different pathways that you can do um, in healthcare. I could go the business route, I can go an education route, I can go um, taking care of patients at the bedside. Um, so there's there's lots of avenues, but. I just encourage you just make connections early. If you're thinking healthcare, if you're thinking nursing, if you're thinking something along those lines, get in there early and start to network and build relationships. Um, I also recently had um, 
a nurse resident, you know, we hire resident nurses right out of um, their program, and she came in, and I only had two positions, and I interviewed 55 candidates. And so she actually recontacted me after and said, and basically begged for a position, so I was able to, to create something for her. And so we really do work with people, so don't be afraid to ask. Um, if you have that much of a drive and you want to get in that bad, I can promise you, Memorial well, Hermann Sugar Lane is going to help you. We need you. <laughs> And in the construction industry, um, it's countless opportunities. And there's, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about labor shortage and who's gonna build our buildings, who are gonna do these things. And it's not just um, electricians and mechanics and carpenters, but it's also people who are artists, people that um, are willing to paint murals, people that wanna do mosaic art. I mean, if you guys have seen this building, there's artists that do a lot of this stuff. So it's not, there's craftsmen. And there's people that go to technical schools. There's people that go to college. There's people that come out of high school and they just want to learn. There's a lot of companies out there that have training programs. There's a lot of companies that partner with places like the Reese Center and will bring in, maybe they just need two young professionals that want to learn how to use a cool machine that cuts steel that ends up being fancy railings all over the world. So there's opportunities to travel, there's opportunities to do everything. And I always use my husband and I as an example because um, I went to college, I got a degree, and like I said earlier, I wish someone had told me that I didn't need to go to a five-year architectural engineering program to have my job. Uh, my husband is an electrician by trade, and he works for a, another company, um, an equal position, and we both got there in completely different ways. So um, it's, if you have um, tenacity and energy and are ready to do something big, if you want to be an inventor, I mean, there's so many opportunities within all of these industries to be an innovator. There's so many things with technology that are changing, and if we look at construction as, as an example, it's still kind of an old school way of doing things, right? But there's also now robotics, there's safety, there's all kinds of different opportunities that if you're creative and you want to think outside the box, I think that's one of my favorite things about my job is that if I have an idea, I can make it happen. I can figure out a way, hey, you know, maybe we could try it this way. Because no two buildings are ever built the same, and it's, that's just a fact. It doesn't matter, even if they're the same, even within the school district. If you go to two schools that look exactly the same, the conditions for those schools are different, and they will be built a different way. Or the person who did it, someone will go left to right, and one person will go top to bottom, or bottom to top, whatever it looks like. So that's what's so exciting, and to be thinking outside the box. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, please help me thank our panel for being here. <laughs> so, just in closing, you'll notice that I put a slide up on the screen that gives you a couple of dates. Um, for all of my students that are sitting in the room that are 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, next Tuesday evening, um, we will be doing a virtual event. Um, program exploration where you will actually hear from um, your home campus. So if you are in the middle schools, um, you probably started getting information sent home that will have links to that if you want to join. That is the place where you can get specific information about programs. What are the classes? How many credits? What does that look like? Um, if you want to know more about coming to the Reese Center, you would be a current freshman, sophomore, or junior. Um, if you're currently in 8th grade, you can't access Reese um, next year, but you are all welcome to join in um, Reese Experience Night on February 10th that will be held here. And information about that, both of those events, are found on the Fort Bend ISD CTE website. So from the perspective of what we have for this evening, it's broad strokes overview, but we hope that it has engaged you from the perspective of just opening your mind to what can be out there and um, the possibilities. So we appreciate you being here. We are making a video of this, and so it will be distributed to all of our 
um, schools, and hopefully they'll put it up on their website. So if anybody wasn't able to attend tonight that you know of, um, they will have access to it. So thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you spending your evening with us.